Good morning and welcome to Friday, September the 11th, 2020. A little more subdued than our normal Fridays, but uh, let's put a couple of fingers to Jack in the coffee and salute to all the people that uh, lost their lives at ni- on 9-11. And, you know, just think about where we are today and, and the lessons that have not been learned. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. The website at allamericangold.com. And, you know, I'm thinking about back then the enemy was in a cave in Afghanistan, if that's what you want to believe. And, And today... Uh, the enemy is is among us, you know. And talking about uh, the rioting, the looting, the anarchy, the div- the complete lack of God in our lives anymore, um, and and the list just goes on and on and on. Yesterday was the restart of football. Uh, the Chiefs and the Texans played. Uh, 16,000 people were allowed to attend the game. And to the horror and dismay of the mainstream media, the crowd booed for the unity event, uh, the players uh, locking arm in arm and and having a a message on the Drumbotron and and these things. And, And I'll say this. I support what it was that I believe the fans were booing about because this isn't about uh, coming together. This isn't about, uh, you know, the a few bad actors on police departments. It's not what this is about. Now, I know the players may want to think that that's what it's about, but listen, what it's really about is – Anarchists are controlling our cities, and, and, and the rioting and the looting and the lawlessness. And the fact of the matter is the vast, 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 vast majority of Americans want law and order, period. And when we sit here, can we be better? Absolutely. But the enemy is within now. And, and we I never thought we could live in a society where... People are being apprehended for setting fires, being apprehended for looting, being apprehended for throwing, whether it be uh, projectiles, rocks, uh, fireworks, things, assaulting the police, and being immediately released by prosecutors. Hey, we're not even going to prosecute these people. Uh, and, and how did we get here? And you think about, you know, I think about 9-11 and I think about, you know, the images of the police and the firefighters running into those buildings and, and paying uh, the ultimate sacrifice. And, and now, 19 years later, we're saying, hey, we, we want to get rid of them. And, and, and the funny thing is, is I don't think most people really believe that. And, and yet here it is on the mainstream ma- media ad infinitum that, you know, we want to defund the police and the police are horrible. And I think this is what you saw Chiefs fans react to last night. You know, it's not just about black lives or blue lives or whatever it may be. It's about all of us. And, and, and this, this country being torn apart at the seams and, and seemingly a, at least a half of the population, you know, in my opinion, seems to be okay with it. Right? I haven't seen any of these professional athletes talk about this nonsense and the violence that needs to stop. I haven't. When I do, I'll support them. You know, there's a, a, a Blue Lives Matter event in, in Cheyenne, uh, Lions Park, tomorrow. Make sure if you have time uh, to go and check that out as well. Support our local law enforcement. But I think that's, that's just my opinion. I don't know. 
right? Well, the reason for the booing, uh, I know this. They just, hey, we're here to watch football, play football. And, and again, I, I'm okay with people wanting to stand up for what they believe, but if you're going to believe that lawlessness and violence and, and chaos and anarchy, if that's what you believe, then, then I don't stand with you, period. And I don't think most of the country does either. So it's it's a weird day, uh, kind of interesting. And I know that uh, uh, the people that were at the football game last night, I didn't really, you know, I didn't see it. I, I, I've read about it today, and, and I actually saw someone posted, and I heard the booing and whatnot, and that was not the reaction that people were going for. But this is the reality. The realities are this whole thing's been hijacked. And now we have, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Is it a sign, right? We got the COVID thing, these fires all along the West Coast. I mean, California, Oregon. I mean, it, it's it's incredible, burning out of control, the riot and the loot. I mean, is this a sign or what? I don't know. I don't want it to be. It's starting to feel that way, though, isn't it? It, it, it truly, truly is. And I don't have the answer. I wish I did. I wish I could tell you, hey, if we just did this and that and the other, it would be, everything would be okay again. They've got their hooks in us. The enemy is within. We need to recognize it. We need to fight it. And we need to win. It's your radio news hour. We'll be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two, and you know, as we watch all of this play out and how all of this ends, uh, I don't know. You know, we're drawing closer to the election, the weirdest election that I can remember. Obviously, with the COVID thing, there's been no debates. I mean, we're less than sixty days away, and uh, you know, the you you you, you know. You're used to having the rallies and all of these things, and we have uh, we really don't have any of that, right? We we have the president doing some. Uh, Joe Biden, I think, rightfully so for the Democrats, right? Keep him, keep a low profile. You don't see much of him. Only talk on the teleprompter, uh, things of that nature, and it really is something where I don't think it matters. Trump win, Biden win, it doesn't matter. I think we're going to see more violence. We're going to see more demonstrations. Uh, and, again, these things uh, get hijacked. I, I liken it to, you know, when Ron Paul, remember when Ron Paul was making a move uh, to get the nomination? And, and of course, they made sure that didn't happen. And, you know, kind of same thing the, the Democrats did to Bernie. But they created, remember the Tea Party? I remember when the Tea Party first, when we first started to gain traction. I mean, that was a Ron Paul movement. And then somehow the media hijacked it and turned it into something totally, totally different. And, and I feel this is the same thing that's happening Today, you know, this started out as a po- police brutality issue and has now been hijacked and, and somehow, uh, and, and especially in the democratically run cities, Somehow they're saying, hey, we're just not going to prosecute. It's an open door. Everyone gets out. No one gets charges pressed against them, and they just go out to, to commit the same you know, atrocities over and over and over and keep the violence going. And, and I just look at it, listen, just from a, a financial perspective, it's devastating for a community. It's very hard to have a comeback in these areas when you have uh, the type of looting and, and destruction that you see uh, businesses shy away. You know, I, I told you, uh, what was it, a few weeks ago, you know, if your building gets burnt, chances are the insurance you think you have isn't good enough 
You know, a lot of insurance policies, they only allow for X amount of dollars for, for removal. In other words, hey, my, I got, it got destroyed by fire, whatever it may be, the building's a loss. I need to knock down what's left, and I've got to get the rubble out of there before we can rebuild it, if that's what they wanted to do. Well, what they're finding out is what it cost to remove the debris, the rubble, is about four times the amount that the the insurance company is willing to give them. You know, and then you sit there and say, well, why didn't it get removed? What happened? You know, and this is what happened. They had insurance, but the insurance wasn't enough, so they just left it. And you think about this thing spreading to city after city after city after city, and eventually, people have, you know, we got to stand up and we've got to have people prosecuted. People have to go to jail. I mean, it's just that simple. Law and order. Without law and order, I, I, you know, what do you have? And I think this is really what we're fighting. I, I don't know how we stop it now. How do you put the genie back in the bottle? You know, Ron Paul, and, and, and I think. Really, if you go back, like, even to 2010, he was talking about revolution. And he was warning us about this this underbelly, if you will, of society in America. And you think about who these people are. The vast majority of them are millennial in age. Right, so they're they're in their mid twenties to mid forties, disenfranchised. A lot of them w- with records, and I know they get the left gets mad when you you claim, oh they're criminals, you know, oh no they're they're just peaceful protesters. No, it's not what it is. See, and there's something bigger at work here, and and I think this is what we need to, to, to look out for. I think this is what the people of Kansas City that were at that football game last night were booing about. And, and I don't know how we get it back because, I you know, everything every time I turn around, I just see it getting worse and worse and worse. And it's almost like, I, I, I don't know how we got here, but somehow the Democrats think this is a good idea. I mean, I think that's what scares me the most. They, they think this, this is going to help them win. This is what they think. This is going to help me get, a, get, this, get Biden elected. Really? That's what's going to help you win? Right? And you think about it, mayor after mayor, governor after governor. I mean, they're all doing the same thing. The, the, the prosecutors that are supposed to prosecute, right, they're all in it together. And I, and I just, I'm like, wow, how did that happen? How did we get elected officials come out and say it's okay to commit crime? I, I just don't get it. And I think, you know, and obviously... With it being 9-11, it makes you, you know, think about uh, everyone that has served and lost their life and, and all of those things. And and it really, it, it's heartbreaking today. Because, you know, this, this should be something um, sacred, if you will. And I just feel like uh, America is being torn apart here. And, and I and I and I just don't understand how 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 did this happen? How did the how does the mayor of Portland justify his actions? How does the 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 prosecutors justify their actions? I don't get it. And it's creating this environment. I mean, look at what the jobless claims were last week. I mean, let's just be honest. Even the watered-down revision government number that try to make it look better, 884,000 people file for unemployment claims for the first time. 
29.6 million people have filed repeatedly. Oh, by the way, the states like Arizona that were first on the three extra three hundred dollars, uh, our money's out. Yeah, so the the government wants to make sure everyone gets a little bit. So the first states, I think us, Montana, I think there's one other. I think this was it for us as far as the extra three hundred dollars. Uh, what do those people do? I don't know. And and we sit here and we're talking about. Uh, people not wanting to stop violence. Dude, if you can stop the violence, people can get back to work. Right? I mean, pretty simple. I mean, I think about the fact of the matter is all of these cities, right, in these states, they're saying how broke they are. Hey, we need money. We need a bailout. And they sit there and you got the, the Democrats talking about we want $3 trillion. Well, maybe if we had the violence and the rioting come to an end, maybe you'd need less money. I don't know. Call me crazy. I don't know. Just a weird day. Just a weird day. Weird things going through my mind and, and thinking about where we're heading, what's going to be the next step, how's this end. I mean, you know, I firmly believe that Donald Trump's going to win the election and these people are going to go crazy. I mean, that's what I just think that's what's going to happen. I think what we're seeing, whether it be in, in, in Portland or whether it's Seattle or Chicago or Rochester, you p- pick a city. That's just the beginning. And these people come out, and I, I've been uh, I've been self-educated myself. I don't know if you've seen lately the latest tactics now, where people will be at a restaurant eating a meal, and all of a sudden here comes a gang, for lack of a better term, right? And they just start destroying stuff, knocking all the food off. Uh, Flipping over tables and chairs, yelling at people, right? And and what what there's what I'm being told is that they're doing this because subconsciously you're racist, and we need to wake you up. And that's what the that's what this is all about. Are you kidding me? Right, and this is playing out. All over the place. What do you think the natural reaction of people is going to be? Pretty simple. Hey, I'm I'm not going out. Not going out. Right, and and, and then of course the only people they hurt are the businesses. And 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 we allow this to happen over and over and over, day after day, night after night. I don't get it. It's dangerous. These people are emboldened. Uh, I think it's spreading and growing. And and really, when you think about it, uh, we've got this whole generation now. You know, it used to always be, hey, you lived better than your parents. And in America, that was true for a lot of generations. I would say the Gen Xers, my generation, maybe not. Maybe, you know, eh, kind of, sort of, maybe Some yes, some no. All the generations after Gen X, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. right? The economic opportunities aren't available that used to be. And, of course, you know, you look at just how much things cost. Yesterday we were talking about FDIC. And uh, we got uh, one of our great listeners, Greg, uh, in the Midwest, sent me this email. You know, the FDIC, when it first started, was $2,500. That was how much the insurance was uh, when they first reopened the banks and tried to get people uh, to to put their money back into these banks. $2,500. That was all that was needed. You know, when you think about that, that was less than 100 years ago. Now it's 250000 and everybody out there will tell you that's not that much money. And 
They raised it, believe it or not, it was at the millennium, it was a hundred grand. They raised it to two fifty, right? During the financial crisis because they had everybody all worried, right? They can raise it to whatever number they want. Right? We can raise it to half a million. Heck, why not a million? Doesn't matter. If you don't have the money to pay for it, what does it matter? And, and and I'm sitting there and I'm I'm watching, you know, all of these different facets, from the lawlessness to the COVID, to the fires, to the joblessness, to people not paying. And we're, I'm thinking about, you know, all the moratoriums, you know, from student debt you don't have to pay it, rent you don't have to pay it, commercial real estate you don't have to pay it. this you don't have to pay, it. and and without consequence yet. But all of these consequences are coming, right? It's, you know, we want to kick the can, 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 right? We keep kicking the can down the road. The problem is at the end of the road is a cliff. Right? And now we've kicked the can. We're at the cliff. It's a radio news. Those that got the gold, you don't have to fall off the cliff. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Got a pretty flat market today. Yesterday, uh, we saw gold and silver rallying uh, after the markets closed. Wall Street stumbled and uh, lost all the gains that it had the day before. Uh, right now, depending on where you look, gold's either flat or down seven, but it's right right at that nineteen fifty level. Silver uh, right at. Uh, twenty-seven dollars this morning, and the the Dow is mixed. The Nasdaq's down sixty points. The Dow's up a hundred and twenty-five hundred and thirty points. Uh, but we'll see. This is one of those things where I think for a lot of people now they're like, okay, what is the recovery? You know, and they want to put a letter on it. We got this fascination with the letter. Is it? You know, a V or a W, the latest is is the K, right? And the K is, hey, the Uber rich, it's done good, right? So you think about the the the, the letter K there, the one the one going up, right? That's the 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 wealthy. Uh, the one going down, that's pretty much Main Street, uh, and that's what they're thinking is happening. Uh, with the recovery, we've got this recovery where very few people are doing well. The vast majority of people got problems, whether it's financial. Uh, we're starting to see uh, a lot of different things appearing. The the mortgage forbearance programs, uh, 7 to 8% now of all mortgages uh, are in some form of forbearance. And the problem is uh, the rolling... Every month that rolls, okay, now now you're 60 days late. Now you're 90 days late. And really, once you get to that 90 days, uh, th- there's no coming back from it. Really. And I shouldn't say there's no coming. It's very unlikely. Uh, and now the, the jobless claims numbers have stalled. Uh, we, you know, when we're sitting here and we're thinking about the people filing continuing claims starting to rise again. That's not what we wanted to see. Uh, and, and, again, I think it's it's a lot of different factors all playing out uh, all at the same time, and some of it really mind-boggling to me. Uh, others of it makes a lot of sense, right? When you shut down businesses and you shut them down for a long period of time, this is what happens. You know, you, you think about, uh, how about Disneyland? Well, Disney World, Disneyland's still not open in California. Disney World in Florida. You know, they, they, they had reopened it with, you know, limited capacity, but they thought they would be full, right? Hey, whatever that capacity, you know, it's 25% or 50%, but but it's going to be full. And they hired, they opened up uh, a number of hotels that would accommodate for it and, and had the park hours set. You know, they got their algorithms, all they, I mean, they did a big study about it and said, okay, how long does the parks need to be open? How many of our hotels need to be open? How many people? A month ago, 
They shut two hotels and cut back the hours at the park. Earlier this week, they did it again. Shut down, shut down the number of hours at the parks again. Laid off staff at five more of their hotels. And, 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 and I bring that up. I only bring it up for one reason. Because it's one of those things where now we've changed the the flow, and it's it's and it's not permanent, but it's long lasting. This isn't something where, hey, next week, next month, Christmas, everything's back to normal. No, this is something now that's going to take three to five years or longer. Probably going to take some form of, of a cure, and, and of course, you know, a lot of talk about the vaccines and all these things, who's going to take it, who's not going to take it, what are the rules that are going to be in place to try to force people to take it. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's a lot. I mean, I I don't know. And and when you're sitting there and you're thinking about why is it that all, again, once again, gold and silver are so popular, and it's really simple. Because it's the one thing, it's the only thing, right, that really is a true store of value. Think about what your your the money we work so hard for. The banks tell you it's worthless. Right? They don't pay you any interest. You don't get paid interest. You don't even get paid interest and the money's not even yours anymore. Think about it. It used to be when you put your money in the bank, and I know people hate to hear it, but it's just the truth. A matter of fact, it's been banking law for several hundred years before we were even a country, just for, for people out there that want to know. When you deposit money into the bank, you don't own the money any longer. Because the banks loan it out. See, and the banks can't loan out money that isn't theirs. Right? They, they, there's laws against that. You can't loan out somebody else's money. So... The banks own it, but in return for you putting your money there, the banks used to pay you interest. Hey, because you know what? We're going to take that money that you deposited, and we're going to lend it to somebody else, and we're going to get interest on that. And because we're nice guys, we'll give you some too. Of course, that's gone, and it's been gone. You know, how long has it been now, really? When's the last time you really got interest on your bank account? 12 years? 15 years? Something like that? I mean, it's been a long time. and doesn't look like it's coming back any time soon. Look at, look at our debt auctions. The amount of debt that we've borrowed and what we're paying for it. It doesn't even keep up with inflation. You're actually losing money. You're buying a 10-year note from the U.S. government. You're losing money when you adjust it for inflation. And, and it just tells you, what does that tell you about the value of the money that you're lending? And it's very simple. I mean, you don't need to have some degree in economics to understand this. It's not worth anything. Matter of fact, they want to make it work less faster, right? When they talk about more inflation, that's what they're talking about. We want it to be worth less faster. You know, and it just brings me back to the FDIC insurance. When they created, I think it was, what, 1934? At 2500 bucks, right? Not Now today it's 250000 Here's the difference, though. At least... In 1934, if a bank went under, we, the FDIC could have actually paid it. Right? Today, I mean, we can pay some of these little banks, but 90% of all the deposits are in 10 banks. Any of those banks go under, they can't pay for the deposit. So what's it even worth? Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, today I've got one item. So yesterday we know we had 
Uh, we had Silver Eagles yesterday. We had St. Gaudens yesterday. Uh, today, uh, U.S. $5 Liberties. They're going to be $575. If you buy 10 or more, five seventy. So five seventy five one through nine, ten or more five hundred and seventy at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Take the time, keep adding to your portfolios. You know this fractional gold. You know, more and more now, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. You got to have it when we build portfolios. Now used to be, you know, we'd put some silver in there and and. Most of it would be $20 gold pieces, right? Something the closest to spot as possible. But, you know, you're starting to look out there at all these different scenarios and in, in having uh, some fractional gold in your portfolio is almost as – it's it's vital. you got to have it now. I mean, you, you just do. You don't feel comfortable without it, right? Yeah, I mean, you still want to have the bulk of your holdings, uh, at least in my opinion, in, in $20 gold. Uh, but silver, I mean, the premiums are sky high on silver. Uh, fractional gold is 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 just a must now. You know, and these are things, you know, a $5 gold piece could be something like a generator. Right? Maybe it's a, a, a tractor or a used pickup truck, things of that nature uh, that you'd be using it for. Uh, 575, 1 through 9, 10 or more at 570 at 800, 592 uh, and again, the the I think everyone's kind of watching. Is, is the Dow going to hold it together or not today? Uh, the S and P has just gone negative, along with the Nasdaq. The Dow is up uh, about ninety five points, uh, and gold's just hanging out. Gold's just watching, waiting. Uh, and actually, right now, actually, gold's down about three bucks, four bucks now. Uh, so uh, as Wall Street's dropping, you're seeing some people. Uh, taking some gold with it, uh, 1945 on gold, silver uh, just below $27. Uh, really interesting thing happening. And, you know, I had uh, our good friend James Morgan, a real estate expert up in Colorado, he joined us for a special show last week, and we were talking about the mortgage delinquencies and what the impact's going to be. And Right now, delinquencies are up 450%. But at the same time, refis are through the roof. And, they're, and again, and, and it's this K-shaped recovery thing, right? The, the people that, hey, I'm okay, I, I, I'm, I'm good to go here, right? I, I got money, and I've got a job, and I've got equity in my home. I'm refinancing. The this, this central bank is buying all the mortgages. All the refis are being bought by the central bank. Uh, matter of fact, now, uh, they hold a third of all mortgages. And that's why the rate is so low, right? The Fed is, is trying to drive that rate down uh, to get people to, to have more money in their pocket, right, to try to get that, that inflation. This is why, you know, we're still seeing prices rise, but now we have the the delinquencies. This this wave. When this wave comes, it's going to be very interesting. What happens to the housing market? I, I truly don't know. I mean, my instincts tells me it's too many homes uh, that it's going to drive prices down. That would be my guess. My guess would be that somewhere uh, early 2021. Uh, when these moratoriums come to a close and whatnot, we're going to see uh, a lot more homes on the market, probably going to see uh, home prices falling. That would be my guess. But it is very, very interesting uh, between the haves and the have-nots. They're still saying there's about 18 million homes left that people have equity they believe enough equity and could actually refinance uh, that haven't done it yet. But they're saying that refis accounted for over 70% of all the loans and homes. 70% of all loans done on uh, the first half of this year uh, were done through refis. So the, the housing market... This interesting dichotomy. Same thing with commercial real estate, right? And so there's a lot of things after the election 
that need to be decided. A lot of things after the election that need to be decided. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, phones are ringing, 800-951-0592, the $5 Liberties, 1 through 9 at 575, 10 or more at 570 at 800 951 0592. When we come back, final segment, uh, we'll, we'll talk about some things that we've got upcoming uh, that, that uh, we're getting ready to close out the week here. Remember, at the end of this month, we get our medals plan. So our medals plans here are going to be ending here in September. Uh, delivery for the 1st of October. If you haven't joined up on, the, on that plan, uh, call us. Get signed up today. Uh, getting ready to end the third quarter, so shipments will go out uh, that first week in October. So be ready for those, for all you medals plan people. Uh, if you're one of those people that you want to roll over or whatnot, make those uh, appointments now. Let us know what you want to do now. If you want to take delivery, maybe you want to wait to the another quarter to build up your monies, uh, give us a call ahead of time so we can get that taken care of. 800 951 zero five nine two uh patriot radio news hour just a short week this week obviously with the with the holiday today being uh 9 11 the holiday of 9 11 i got uh, the anniversary not a holiday uh, of 9 11 kind of a somber day uh just a lot of weird things happening in the country today uh not sure that we can unite on this one patriot radio news hour final segment coming up 800-951-0592. I will say this for you, those of you on 1360, we're going to have a special 9-11 show that's going to follow this program. So uh, right after this program, we're going to have a special 9-11 show. Uh, and and I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I'm gonna, I'll just say this. You're going to want to tune in. going to be extremely educational and interesting and and uh, this is a special uh, show uh, thank you to, to Glenn Tate who normally does the show uh, he is going to yield his time and we will be doing uh, 1360khnc.com if you want to tune in uh, if you're not in the listening area just go out on your phone uh, your laptop whatever just google 1360khnc.com and click the listen live button and you can uh get the show my guess is this is going to be a very interesting uh hour coming up next uh the uh 9 11 show i believe jason is going to be uh hosting it uh jason one of the uh he knows a ton about this uh, 9 11 and all the things behind 9 11 so make sure you tune in for that uh, here, the U.S. $5 Liberties, uh, 1 through 9 at 575, 10 or more at 570. Uh, we are pretty much caught up. Had a big shipping day yesterday here in Phoenix and Colorado as well. Uh, the Silver Eagles are in route. Uh, the AU Peace Dollars are in route. Other than that, uh, we are 100% caught up. 800. Nine five one zero five nine two. A quick look here at the markets before we head out. Uh, gold's at nineteen forty five. Silver's at twenty well twenty six dollars and ninety cents. Uh, the Dow is up one hundred and twelve. The Nasdaq's down six. I'm sorry. The S and P's down six. The Nasdaq's down a hundred and five. Well, now, now the Dow's up seventy. So uh, the Dow's looking like it wants to go. Uh, back down the other way today, uh, but a lot of that happening, and again, mostly because as we look down the road, where are these profits going to be uh, and, and these ratios? We talked about P.E. ratios surpassing the dot-com bubble. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how all of this works out. I think this recovery, K's probably a good letter. I think there's going to be some, some very few people that do very, very well but I do think this is the, and we see this every 10 years or so, another leg down in the middle class. 
and I think we're going to see this again here with this crisis, another big drop-off in the middle class of the United States, and this is kind of the decline that we've been seeing really since the 70s. You know, we talked about it earlier in the show, uh, not the ability not to live better than your parents uh, becoming a paramount issue and I think before it's all said and done in the next, you know, I, put it this way, I don't think we get out of here in the next 10 years with, with Federal Reserve notes. I don't think it's going to happen. They're going to tell us the electronic currency is going to be saving us all, uh, and it's going to be a big, huge reset of everyone's wealth, and those that have the gold are the ones that are going to do the best. That's just how I see it. 800 951 God bless everybody over this weekend. Uh, We'll be back on Monday. Everybody take care. Be safe out there this weekend. And again, bless everybody.